The Indian Territory of the Central United States was established in the 1800s in what is present-day Oklahoma. It was formed for the purpose of relocation of Indian tribes which were moved there under the U.S. government policy of the time known as Indian removal. The territory was unincorporated and unorganized and had very little governmental structure or law enforcement. As such, it became a haven for individuals who were seeking refuge from the law or just wanting to live where there would be very little expectation of laws being formally established or enforced. The Cherokee Indian tribe was one of the so-called civilized tribes of the Indian Territory, which also included the Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, and Seminole tribes. They were called the civilized tribes because they accepted the ways of white men more readily than many of the Plains tribes of the West. The Cherokee Nation of the Indian Territory was split into political subdivisions, one of those subdivisions being known as the Going Snake District, so named for a Cherokee chief who came from Georgia during the Trail of Tears in the 1830s. There existed a grist mill on Flint Creek in what is today Delaware County in eastern Oklahoma. The mill was partially owned by a Cherokee woman, Polly Hildebrand, who inherited her interest from her deceased husband and who ran the mill with her fourth husband, Jim Kesterson. For reasons lost in time, a Cherokee man named Zeke Proctor became angry at Polly's husband, Jim, and went to the mill to confront him. An argument ensued and became heated to the point that the two men got into a gunfight. Polly threw herself between the two men, trying to stop the argument, but unfortunately took a fatal bullet to the chest from Zeke Proctor's gun. Kesterson ran to escape, but he also received two non-life-threatening bullets. Kesterson escaped, and Proctor was taken into custody for the shooting. Polly's maiden name was Beck, and the Beck family was prominent within the Going Snake district. Zeke Proctor's family was also prominent, and a serious feud developed between the Becks and the Proctors due to Polly's shooting death at the hands of Zeke Proctor. Zeke considered Polly's shooting to be accidental. He had no animosity toward her and felt that her death was only as a result of her being in the proximity of Jim Kesterman during the gunfight. The Beck family felt otherwise. They blamed Zeke for the death of a family member and sought justice. Since the shooter and the deceased were both Cherokee, a trial was scheduled in a court within the jurisdiction of the Cherokee tribe. The Beck family felt that they would not get a fair shake at the trial because of the influence they felt the Proctor family wielded. Consequently, they went to Fort Smith, Arkansas and had warrants sworn out for most of the participants in the trial who were supportive of Zeke Proctor. The U.S. Commissioner in Fort Smith based his decision to issue the warrants on the fact that Kesterman was a white man and thus they had jurisdiction to do so. The deputy U.S. Marshals assigned to serve the warrants were given strange instructions. They were to serve the warrants only if Zeke Proctor were to be acquitted. Zeke Proctor's trial began on April 15, 1872, 
and trouble started in the very beginning as a group from the Beck family, led by two U.S. deputy marshals, showed up at the courthouse. The group of intruders from the Beck faction, led by White Sut Beck, pushed their way into the proceedings, all armed to the hilt. A shot was fired, probably by White Sut Beck, and all hell broke loose, both inside and outside the courthouse. Gunfire from each family roared within the courtroom. The first to be fatally wounded was Johnson Proctor, brother of the defendant Zeke Proctor. Even the defendant himself produced a weapon from within his clothing and was a participant in the fight. The Beck clan soon realized that they were badly outgunned, but not before six Becks or Beck sympathizers were shot dead. One Proctor and a Proctor sympathizer lost their lives in the melee. Zeke Proctor's elderly defense attorney, Mose Alberti, was one of the dead victims along with Deputy U.S. Marshal Owens. All told, 11 men lost their lives in the courtroom shootout. Also, many partisans and innocent bystanders were wounded. White Sut Beck was badly hurt, but did survive. The next day, the jury convened at the jury foreman's house and after a short deliberation, acquitted Zeke Proctor. The U.S. Marshal in Fort Smith was not happy about the situation and dispatched a posse of 21 men to Going Snake to arrest Zeke Proctor, but Zeke had hightailed it into the most inaccessible parts of the Cherokee lands. The head of the posse went to Tahlequah, the Cherokee capital, and demanded that the Cherokee chief deliver Proctor and a long list of other Cherokees. As might be expected, the demand was declined. Eventually, Zeke Proctor and 20 other Cherokees were indicted for the death of U.S. Deputy Marshal Owens. The Cherokee Nation lobbied Washington, and President Ulysses S. Grant eventually granted federal amnesty to Proctor and his supporters. A federal indictment of White Sut Beck was also dismissed, and a tenuous peace returned to the Going Snake District. Zeke Proctor became somewhat of a folk hero within the Cherokee Nation. Zeke Proctor and White Sut Beck avoided each other over the years but eventually met face to face in the later years of their lives. At that meeting, Beck said, quote, We're too old to fight. I'm game, and I know you are too, but I'll walk away if you will. End quote. The two proud old men walked away, and without fanfare, the feud was over. Nobody had backed down. Nobody had won and nobody had lost, which was how it should have ended. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up, click on the bell for notification of future videos, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.